love some action. But like it, yeah, this is that I can Thank you very much, uh, Vicky. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, again, I'm uh, Matt Diamond, uh, coming from San Francisco uh, with uh, Misfit. Uh, can everyone hear me in the back okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, it's again, it, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk to you today about um, wearable technology specifically and uh, its applications uh, to healthcare. Um, appreciate uh, all the good work that IDA is doing and uh, bringing us here uh, to share some of our stories and why we're so excited about uh, a smart nation and how wearable technology can be a part uh, of that uh, program. But uh, I do have a disclaimer, which is that I'm here to talk about technology, but technology itself um, is not the road to, uh, to happiness or to the success of a program. And I appreciate what Steve said uh, yesterday is it's not about the tech, it's about the people. And how can we use the technology um, to basically uh, to, to help everyone thrive, flourish, uh, and function as efficiently um, as, as possible? What I think we can look to technology to do is to help solve some of the problems that it actually contributed to um, in the first place and some of the issues uh, that technology has raised. So uh, specifically, I'm talking about um, an, an epidemic of obesity, uh, chronic disease. We've talked about um, you know, heart disease, uh, diabetes, um, and these uh, chronic conditions that uh, an industrialized uh, society you know, uh, uh, has, has adopted. And Singapore is actually doing pretty well, uh, even though um, there is a trend towards uh, increasing um, uh, obesity and chronic disease. You're actually doing much better uh, than we're doing in the United States, where our rates are, are probably triple um, that of here. But uh, the trend uh, is concerning. And in the context of, again, what we talked about, uh, an aging population uh, globally and here in Singapore, um, and increased uh, urban uh, density. Um, what can technology do for us, and specifically, what can uh, sensors do for us uh, as part of building uh, a smart nation? So let me tell you a little bit more about where I'm coming from. Um, at Misfit, we invent and manufacture uh, great uh, wearable products, and now also uh, ambient uh, sensing products, uh, part of the interconnected smart home that we've been learning about uh, at this uh, conference a bit. Uh, our, our, our office where I work is in San Francisco, but we have a, another office um, uh, not too far from here in Ho Chi Minh City, um, and we do much of our manufacturing uh, in Korea. So specifically uh, for wearable technology, I want to focus on a few areas. Um, first of all, uh, if you are building wearable tech, what are the design principles that you need to uh, adopt to make them successful? Or if you're shopping for wearable tech and you want to give the five million, uh, uh, the, the population of Singapore uh, a wearable sensor uh, to, to basically uh, to track their activity, perhaps their sleep, uh, what should you look for in a sensor to make it uh, successful, to make the program successful? Uh, well, what about going beyond wearables? So we'll talk about devices that help uh, keep track uh, of your activities without having to wear anything at all. And I also want to talk about uh, what is the, um, the applications and uh, what really, where does the value come in? And even though um, most of the initial excitement around wearables has been how can it be used as a direct intervention? In other words, how can uh, wearing a device uh, help me be healthier? I think a, a growth area and an area I want to highlight today is how can uh, wearables and other sensors be used to track other interventions? Every intervention uh, in healthcare, whether it's in hospitals, uh, out in the community, how can it be used uh, to make sure that everything that we're doing uh, as part of the healthcare system is reaching the goals 
uh, that we wanted to reach. I want to start with a review of wearable technology. Um, I know some of you are familiar. How many of you, if I could just take a, a, a quick show of hands, how many of you are wearing a, a wearable sensing uh, device right now? Okay. And how many of you have worn one uh, in the past, have tried one out in some form or another? Okay, a lot more of you. Um, and one of the things that we'll address today is, how do you give someone a device so that they keep, not only do they wear it for the first week, but so that they keep wearing it? Because again, if you give out five million devices to everyone in Singapore to wear and keep track of their wellness, um, if they don't wear it, it's not gonna be very useful for you. And if you have uh, big data with a lot of missing data, then you end up having small data, okay? And it's not as exciting and not as powerful. So it really comes down to the quality of your data um, is gonna be based on the quality of the, the source and where you're getting it from. Um, and that's uh, one of the things that I wanna to highlight today. So let's give uh, a quick overview of wearables because I know some of you are familiar, but I want you to just appreciate the variety um, that's out there. And, and most of these have come out in the last few years, okay? So there are clips, there are straps and armbands. Uh, we have wrist-worn devices and we have new wrist-worn devices coming out um, every week. Uh, there are devices that are specifically for your sleep, patches that you can wear that track your uh, vital signs very closely, devices that are worn on your shoes or your ankles, um, internet connected scales, other medical devices like blood pressure monitors that are also uh, connected, and then actual clothes that have sensors uh, embedded in the clothes. All of these devices work with an app. And then there's also the family of apps specifically that turn your phone into a wearable device. So there's, there's a lot of devices that I've shown and there's a lot that I haven't shown. Um, and this is the family of devices that uh, you can choose from if you want to implement uh, a program to keep track of a population. Um, but the question, again, I want to come back to is, are wearables truly wearable? Okay. And for that, I want to take a step back. Um, two of our founders at Misfit, uh, Sunny Vu and Sridhar Iyengar, came from the medical device world. And specifically, uh, they, were, they founded a company called Aga Matrix that uh, they're very proud to have produced the first medical device to have directly interface with the iPhone. But when you talk to Sunny and Sri, what they're particularly proud of is the fact that, oh, sorry, that this device here, the IBG Star, which is a miniature glucose meter that plugs right into the iPhone, you can see this young diabetic is super excited to be where, to be using her glucometer. In fact, what they heard again and again is that children were saving up their uh, own allowance in order to buy a glucometer like this that they could use. And that's the kind of excitement that you need to have for a successful program with wearable sensors. You need uh, patient engagement and uh, excitement uh, from the users uh, about using the technology. And it's, I think, very much what Amr said uh, yesterday. You know, why has the uh, cell phone camera uh, basically you know, become the primary camera that's used today. Yes, it's convenient, but the connectivity that you have, every picture you take is immediately available, shareable, and it's the same thing for um, medical information or wellness information that wearables um, collect when they're uh, connected. So to have a successful wearable, number one, you need to actually solve a real problem. You need to provide a function. Um, it seems um, obvious, but it's, it's one that's not to be missed. 
you want to put the person first, and again, I think that's the great thing about this conference, um, is that the emphasis is, is on the, the people, and it's, it's te using technology, um, but putting humans first. And the third part, we talked a lot about uh, the cloud and the network, but appreciating that if you're wearing a device, or if everyone here is wearing a device, uh, all these devices are connected, and they need to um, you know, talk to other apps, networks, and, and other um, organizations. So let me go into more specifics. I'm going to skip that. This is uh, our first activity monitor. It's called uh, the Shine. And I'm actually I'm wearing one right here. Um, I'll explain to you how it works uh, so you know what I'm talking about. It has 12 lights uh, around the periphery of the device. We ask every user to set an activity goal. And whether that's, uh, you know, we, we all did our, uh, our dance moves this morning uh, as part of the warm up for this uh, conference. But it's very easy today to sit at your work or to sit at a conference like this and not move around at all. So we ask everyone to set a goal. It may be that you want to walk 10,000 steps every day. And so the full set of lights around the shine represent the completion of your goal. If you've done just a quarter of your goal, you see a quarter of the lights. If you've done half your goal, you see half the lights. And it basically allows you to answer the question, are you moving enough? Is it really important to know that you're taking exactly 5,764 steps? I don't think so. But it's, it's very useful, and I found it personally useful. At the end of the day, um, if you're sitting at your computer, uh, you, uh, you look at the shine and you say, wow, you know, I, it's a bit of a wake-up call to see how, much, how easy it is uh, not to move very much. And living an active lifestyle is probably the most important thing you can do uh, for your health. If you want to find out that more detailed information, um, a physical activity monitor like uh, the shine syncs with um, our app. Um, on a phone or a tablet, and then you can get the more detailed information um, about exactly how much you move. And we also uh, track your sleep because we understand um, how important sleep is uh, for wellness. So solving a problem. Another important part of solving a problem is not creating new problems or not creating more problems than you're solving. And that's why we put a lot of uh, emphasis and work into making sure that our device requires no charging. So uh, it's extremely energy efficient. You can use uh, the Shine activity monitor for six months at a time. At that point, you just change the battery. Um, and we decided that we didn't, certainly we have enough devices these days to charge. And every time you take off a device to charge it, it's an opportunity not to put it back on. And when you don't put it back on, you have all of that data um, that's lost. So that was a priority for us. And another part about not creating new problems is if you have to worry about your device, if it's not durable, uh, if you have to worry about whether it's waterproof, if you have to take it off uh, when you're swimming or in the shower, or if you're concerned you're going to ruin it, you know, getting it wet, um, that's also something else to worry about. It's a barrier. And it's a new problem that now this wearable device uh, has created. So our, our device uh, is completely waterproof. It's also really helpful of the problems that you're solving and what you're encouraging people to do is, again, something that they really enjoy. So um, encouraging people to be more active has its own rewards. Um, and it's an exciting area uh, for us uh, to contribute. What about putting humans first? What does that mean? Well, it means avoiding having to ask people to do things that they wouldn't normally do or wear things you know, that they're not comfortable wearing. And in all fairness, this is not a wearable device. This is um, actually a, an art project. But it gives you an idea. Um, don't ask people uh, to do things that they wouldn't feel comfortable doing otherwise without your device. Another aspect of paying attention to the person wearing the device is to make your device uh, small. 
Um, we don't need another big thing to carry around. And it's important to pay attention to individual style. Are you asking everyone in Singapore to wear exactly the same uh, sensor that looks exactly uh, the same? Or are you able to let people express their individuality, their own style? And for us, it was important to make sure that you could wear shine in different ways, uh, you know, different colors. This is our, our necklace. Um, whatever device you choose, uh, you saw with the introduction of the uh, Apple Watch how important it was for all those different bands and all those different choices and all those different customizations to be available. And, and, um, and that's really uh, an important part of a successful wearable device. When you present the data, you want to present it in a very simple, accessible way. Um, and uh, this is a conference that is very well uh, tuned in to the importance of uh, the network. Uh, the idea that hardware needs to talk to software and you don't want uh, your users to, to get in the middle of a fight between your hardware and your software or an incompatibility. So uh, again, uh, an image some of us are familiar with, um, and not one that, that we want to see uh, with any devices that we're uh, putting out. Um, we talked a lot about connectivity here. Um, it's also important to realize that when you're putting out uh, a sensor or a device, we don't know what other devices and sensors with the explosion of interconnected um, devices, what will be out there in six months. So it's crucial that your device can uh, be flexible. And uh, for, for us, this meant making sure that the firmware updatability was a, a, a rock solid um, part of our characteristics. Um, anytime we want, um, in less than a minute, uh, during a synchronization of the device with the phone or tablet, we can entirely reprogram uh, the firmware on the device and essentially um, giving, um, you know, refreshing uh, the, uh, the functionality uh, of the sensor. Of course, there are a lot of issues of privacy and confidentiality that, that I won't get into, but um, we touched on here in the conference. Uh, bottom line is people have to have a faith that they own their data um, and that it will be kept safe. So the big picture is, I'm talking about an evolution in wearables from uh, early devices that look more like someone is you know, going to go and run an Ironman uh, competition to uh, what you could call wearables 2.0, which I think is a lot more realistic uh, to ask the citizens of uh, Singapore to wear than to expect um, everyone to uh, adopt large, bulky plastic uh, sensors. So please uh, keep that uh, in mind. And if we think about a sensor like this on the right being a little bit more invisible, the next stage in sensor technology is to make it completely invisible. And for that, uh, let me tell you about an ambient sensing device. This is uh, called the, 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 the Misfit Medic Sleep Monitor. And it's a little bit hard to see here because it's, like I said, it's invisible, um, but it's, it's uh, a very thin ribbon that slips underneath the sheet of your bed and keeps track of how much you're sleeping and how well you're sleeping. So for this device, you don't have to wear anything. You actually don't have to do anything. You just get into bed like you normally would and you're able to get information about your sleep. And what's important is to be able to correlate that information with other aspects of your life. In other words, how much exercise did you do that day and how well did you sleep? Or how much uh, caffeine or alcohol did you drink and how did that affect your sleep? And in this way, provide insights um, into your wellness. It's actually amazing how much information you can get from a sensor like this. It's not just are you in bed or are you out of bed. Um, the bedded device uses a 
a technology called ballistocardiography, which means that the vibrations that your heart makes while you're sleeping can be tracked, and you can get a readout that matches uh, pretty much exactly with an electrocardiogram, which you know requires uh, generally uh, sensors to be actually attached to the body. So what we have here is, while you're sleeping with this sensor, we can have extremely accurate uh, respiratory and cardiac uh, monitoring that can provide insights into if you're an athlete, um, are you training enough? Are you training too much? Uh, we can provide advice. Um, maybe today you should go a little bit lighter because we see how your heart is responding to the training that you've done in the last few days, to the activity that we've detected, maybe if you're wearing an activity monitor as well. And we can provide both athletes and non-athletes uh, insights uh, into their health. If you can imagine, five million sensors detecting um, the overnight uh, heart rates of all of the population of Singapore. Uh, without anyone doing anything, without them being attached to anything, uh, all of this data uh, being uploaded to the cloud, it's an incredibly uh, powerful uh, data stream. Um, and it's actually quite economical uh, to do, and it can provide um, data that has never before been uh, available uh, to medical researchers. Just to touch on for a moment, when you're providing data, it's important to educate the users. We found it's even more important to educate users um, with invisible devices because you don't have that direct interaction with a wearable device that you do. So again, we want to explain um, to users why is sleep important? You know, what is sleep apnea? Um, how does their weight affect their sleep and their sleep affect their weight uh, and their activity? And if we move beyond wearables and also beyond ambient sensors, I want to talk for a moment about implantable sensors. So instead of asking people to wear a device, maybe to wear it on their wrist uh, or wherever they choose, there are now uh, quite miniaturized monitors. This is the uh, Reveal Link by Medtronic, the smallest uh, implantable cardiac monitor. Um, it's been used now with patients with uh, heart disease. But the next step is to use it with performance athletes. And we will see this trend happening. If you want to know how is your athlete uh, doing, and they're wearing a monitor, and you can keep track of their every heart uh, beat, and you really know how hard they're working, uh, how they're doing. Uh, a, device, a device like this doesn't require surgery. It's a 